In 2010, Christopher Anthony Linton, also known as Dogpa, was one of Jamaica's most wanted men and a $250,000 reward was posted by the Jamaica Constabulary Force for information leading to the arrest of the then 24-year-old, who at the time had been on the run for more than three months. However, in the eyes of the then soft-spoken young man, whose very name was said to evoke fear and trembling, there was simply no reason for him making the list or even his ascension to its pinnacle. This video is brought to you by Fountain Mighty Roots. Audrey, I must commend you. Nice wig. Wig? Mm -hmm. Darling, this is all natural. Thanks to Fountain Mighty Roots. Fountain Mighty Roots is the best hair product coming out of Jamaica. Real black Jamaican castor oil and the pimento. Amen. It gives my hair a more healthier, bouncy, richer look. Even good for the edges. Edges? Mm. Where can I get it? Look onto your website, fountainoil.com and even on Amazon. Fountain Mighty Roots. It's hair to save your hair. You owe it to your roots. Teach them! Always make sure the message I reach them! At the time, cops said his organizing abilities was almost second to none in terms of influencing the youths and the citizens in the Augustown area. They asserted that he was a significant player in the extortion activities in and around Augustown and the Papine. Linton, who according to the police, ran the feared Dogpaw Gang out of the rural St. Andrew community of Kintyre, was wanted for several murders and shootings in and around his reputed fiefdom. But Linton at the time said the charges were trumped up and stemmed from a vendetta, the genesis of which he said he was unable to reveal. The police are painting pictures about me and this is not true, said the fairly well-spoken Linton. He was speaking from his hideout. Five days after the police posted the $250,000 reward for information leading to his capture when he claimed he was being blamed for things he knew nothing about. Everything that happens, everything that goes on around me, I am the one that gets the blame, he said. He also claimed that reports that he sent threats to the police and that he was involved in an attack in a shootout in Augustown were far from the truth. Reports that I have attacked the police are not true. I am not a madman. Superintendent Derek Cowboy Knight, who was the head of the St. Andrew Central Police Division, had said a few weeks prior that the cops had been trying for some time to apprehend Linton and had sent messages demanding he turn himself in, only to be told in return, quote, I don't have to get past my gun, which according to the police was an AK-47, believed to be his weapon of choice. He however pushed back at those claims, saying, listen to me sir, you cannot put out attacks against the police. That is against the law and they have no intention of going against the law, he insisted. With his voice breaking at times as he seemingly tried to suppress his anguish over the circumstances he had found himself in, Linton said he feared being killed if he turned himself over to the police. He also said that he needed a private investigator to speak to the people in the communities in which the police claim he had committed serious crimes. I need someone to speak to the people, ask them if I have committed any of the crimes that the police claim I did. He claimed he had already done time behind bars between 2006 and 2008 on accusation of murder and was puzzled that he was being accused by the authorities of more crimes. Relatives of the then wanted man also went public, claiming in an interview that Linton was very scared and needed assurances of his safety before turning himself into the police. The authorities in response released a statement that Linton had nothing to fear. Superintendent Knight said he wanted Linton to come in and allow the due process of law to take place. If he wants to give himself up, he can do so with his attorney in the quickest possible time. Attorneys representing Linton can make contact with the police and arrangements will be made for him to give himself up, said Knight. With apparent frustration edging his voice, Linton said the fear of being killed and living in hiding had made him seriously depressed. That, however, did not stop him from expressing hope that he may see his two children grow up. He also said one of the reasons preventing him from turning himself over to the police was his inability to afford a lawyer. I am broke, I don't have an income right now, but I am seriously looking at the option. He also spoke about his life on the run. It is very stressing, also when you are unable to spend time around the family. I want to see my children grow. I am no criminal. 
Though police officials did not give details about Linton's capture in December of 2010, sources say he was caught without incident in a house on Goodison Avenue in Elliston Flats, with two women believed to be students of a well-known university near the end of a day-long cordon and search operation. One 9mm pistol was also seized during the operation. Hours after the arrest of Linton, the police captured one of his top lieutenants, Nicholas Nesbeth, also known as Frykey, during a joint police military operation in the Sterling Castle area of Red Hills, St. Andrew. One of the crimes for which dog power was being sought was a pre-dawn slaying of three family members in Bedward Gardens, St. Andrew. According to the police, Linton led a group of close to 50 men who sprayed a house with bullets for several terrifying minutes before setting it on fire. One person who claimed to have escaped the vicious pre-dawn attack in Bedward Gardens painted a picture of the terror unleashed by the group of heavily armed men. The police claim were led by a dog paw. The man who escaped the attack described how he and five members of a family cowered under a bed for several minutes as the sound of gunfire rang out. You hear gunshots from outside till them reaching at the house. And all when them reaching at the house, gunshots still are fire, he said, while standing several feet from the burnt out remains of the five room property. While under the bed, he said he heard one of the gunmen demanding money from Mary Silton a 50-year-old taxi operator. He said the sound of gunfire rang out again after one of the gunmen ordered one of his cronies to quote, kill the boy, saying he was fearful that he would be next. The man recounted how he dashed through a back door and related how 31-year-old Diana Forbes willed another family member to follow him before she, her 6-year-old son, Jahe Mackey and Hilt and her uncle were killed. Run, run, she reportedly shouted. Another family member shot during the attack was also hospitalized. The triple murder case against Linton collapsed as his two co-accused, Yannick Ellis and Donald Allen, were freed after prosecutors told a judge in the home circuit court that they were discontinuing the trial against them, subject to the availability of witnesses. The prosecutor revealed that the main prosecution witness in the case against Ellis and Allen sent police investigators a voice note laced with expletives stressing that he did not want to give evidence. He told them that if they tried to find him, they won't. In the case against Linton, the witness was not answering his phone and the police could not find him at the address they had for him. The not guilty verdict came from Justice Courtney Day, who rejected the prosecution's case against Linton for illegal possession of firearm and shooting with intent. Linton was however sentenced to 15 years along with his co-accused Michael Allen in the High Court Division of the Gun Court. Both men were convicted for shooting at two police officers along Tavern Drive in St. Andrew in April of 2010. A third accused, Ricardo Jones, was freed on a non-case submission as the prosecution was unable to show that he was among the men who allegedly shot at the police on the night in question. This sentencing came a day after reports surfaced that Linton was allegedly beaten by security personnel at the Horizon Remand Center in Kingston. Dogpaw was allegedly beaten severely by soldiers. The media received letters written by him revealing his discomfort at the ill-treatment being reportedly meted out and his cry for help. In the opening paragraph of one of Linton's letters, dated the 30th of January 2012, he said, quote, My name is Christopher Linton. I need help. I am a remandee at the Horizon Adult Remand Center. I am located on Security Post 11, which is guarded by soldiers, and I am a victim of severe physical abuse. My brother was beaten to death in jail, and I fear the same will happen to me. End quote. In another letter to his girlfriend, dated the 22nd of February 2012, a day after the alleged beating took place, Linton complained of awakening with excruciating pain all over his body as a result of the prior assault. I woke up about 6 this morning with pain all over babe. I can't open my mouth at this time, like I have a fractured jawbone. I need something published now. The left knee is damaged and the right shoulder including my left ribcage, even the middle finger and the left hand. Both jawbones are paining now, Linton wrote. Interestingly, Linton also made reference to the alleged assault on Leighton Liberty Coke, which left him with injuries he described as greater than his own. Coke said, bust up on injuries all over. It's cruelty that we are facing. I can't even imagine what is going to happen the next time. Jaja is a piece of man they want to send home to my family. He continued, right now, I am shaking while writing this letter, babe. I was planning on writing you a book. 
I started the 19th, which was Sunday. This incident stirred up everything. I can't even continue. I think it would have been better if I had died instead of this. It is pure madness. Lord God have mercy on us. Meanwhile, Diane Jobson, who was Linton's attorney at the time, said that she observed that her client had stitches to wounds he had received while in custody. Jobson explained that Linton had what appeared to be stitches on his chin, cuts and so on to his back. His jaw was swollen and shoulder. You could see that he was beaten, she said. Dark Paw is also believed to be the father of Leah Tavares Vincent's first child. She was pregnant at the time of his arrest. When the police finally found Dark Paw in the house at Elliston Flats, he had written, in full anticipation of being killed, a letter addressed to his mother, his girlfriends, his children and his yet unborn child. Leah Tavares Finson is the daughter of Jamaica Labour Party Senator and prominent lawyer Tom Tavares Finson and former Miss World Cindy Breakspear. Teach them! Hey yo, hello! Send the message and make it reach them. It's teach them right here, Warlord representing. Thank you for watching. Please leave a comment below. Remember to like and share the video. Don't forget to subscribe for more awesome content. Follow me on social media and check out the suggested videos on screen. This is Teach saying, until next time, walk good, my friends.